Hi, it's Handy Andy Tech Tips here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Yamaha AS701 Integrated Amplifier. So the first question that you might be asking is, what kind of features does it have? Well, not many. Do you want DLNA streaming? Well, you're out of luck. Do you want Bluetooth to connect your phone? No way. In fact, this amplifier is so basic that it doesn't even have an AM FM tuner or any kind of display on it at all. And that kind of indicates it's not going for the 9.1 channel home theater kind of audience. No, this is a stereo amplifier and it's designed to major on sound alone. In fact, it's retro in every way, from its feature set to its actual design. As you can see, it has this amazing brushed metal finish on the front. It looks really awesome. And so does the remote. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that this is one of the best remotes I've ever seen on a piece of stereo equipment. It's got a beautiful finish on the top and it feels really nice to hold. But returning to the amp for a minute, that 1970s build quality is there as well. I mean, it weighs 11.2 kilos. Yes, you heard that right. There's hardly any plastic that you can see on the front of the unit at all. And no switch mode power supplies either, because when you look inside, you'll find a gigantic custom-made power transformer, custom-made capacitors, and two enormous aluminium heat sinks. So let's look at the controls that you get on the front panel. So you've got a power button, quite self-explanatory, and right next to it is a quarter inch headphone jack. And then we've got the all important speaker selector. Now, as you can see with the terminals there, this amp either allows you to have a single set of speakers, two separate pairs, or you can buy wire a single pair. Now, by wiring essentially means that you're sending the same audio signal twice, once to the high frequency driver, the tweeter, and once to the low frequency woofer. Some people say it improves sound quality, but I'm not so convinced, especially since you need to use twice the amount of speaker cable. Anyway, now we've got our tone controls, bass and treble, and these these are really interesting, because not only do they apply a plus 10 dB boost and minus 10 dB cut, which is quite normal and expected, they do it at 20 Hz for the bass and 20 kHz for the treble. This means that you're boosting the super low bass and super high treble, which should mean that you get a more realistic presentation overall. And then you've got the balance control, which selects how much sound is coming out of each speaker. Not necessarily that useful I suppose, but it's good for testing things. Now have you ever tested tested listening to speakers at a really low volume. Annoying, hey? Well, it's likely that it wouldn't have sounded any good because our ears perceive less high and low frequencies and more mid-range in quiet sounds. To counteract this, Yamaha has provided a loudness control. Now, this is not the same as a volume control. What it does is reduces the one kilohertz component of your music, e.g. the mid-range, by up to 30 decibels. Wow, are you serious? Have we still got more controls to talk about? Well, I suppose this is an interesting one that you're going to see next because it is the input selector. As you can see, you just turn the knob and the LEDs light up depending on which source is selected. And now I have an excuse to show this awesome photo of the back panel again. So there are all the inputs there on the left hand side. And firstly, you actually have a phono input. This means that you can plug your turntable directly into the amp without needing to buy a separate preamp. And it handles the RIAA de equalization and all of that stuff. Next, you actually have a special analog CD input and it's unique because it's integrated with a feature called CD Direct Amp. This bypasses the tone controls and the loudness controls and the idea is that it gives you a direct and pure connection to the CD source with less noise and distortion. Continuing with the inputs you can plug in a tuner and then there's a couple of line inputs and the last two have a record functionality which means that the amplifier will output any source which is currently playing through the record terminal. So you can plug in a CD recorder, USB recorder, even an old tape deck. Rounding out the list of inputs, we've got two digital connections. We've got Toslink Optical and Coaxial. And these work with the amp's inbuilt 192kHz 24-bit digital to analog converter. So it's got quite a decent one in there. Alright, so we've looked at the front panel, we've looked at the back panel, we've looked at the design and the features, but how does this thing actually sound? Well, in a word, it sounds fantastic. 
The tech specs of how much power it gives out are on the screen now, but it just gives a wonderfully rounded sound. When I plug in my CD changer through the analog inputs and connect some high quality bookshelf speakers, the sound it produces is nothing short of outstanding. And now I'm just going to throw some hi-fi magazine buzzwords into there as well. It has fantastic timing, it has a big full body sound. Anyway, it sounds really good, that's all you need to know. So would I recommend the AS701 by Yamaha? Absolutely. If you're a bit of a beginner audiophile and you just want an awesome sounding two channel system to play your favourite songs, then this would be a great centrepiece for it. And because it's built so well, I'm sure that you'll get years of enjoyment out of this product. Anyway, I'm Handy Andy and thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want more tech videos. And if you're a subscriber of mine already, then why not leave a comment telling me whether you'd like me to do more high videos.